And here we go. Hello, welcome to the Primary Candidate Forum co-sponsored by the Daily Record newspaper and the League of Women Voters. My name is Charlie Sorensen and I am the Voter Services Chair for the League of Women Voters, Kittitas County. Founded in 1920, the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization with 800 affiliates across the country. It encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League never endorses or opposes candidates or political parties at any level. We don't care how you vote, just that you vote. League membership is open to all genders, ages 16 and over, and we invite you all to join us. Our moderator for this primary candidate virtual forum event is Catherine Murphy. Catherine has been a member of League since 2017, where she has filled a variety of roles at the state and local level. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Charlie. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to moderate our virtual 2020 candidate forums. These events offer voters the opportunity to hear directly from candidates in response to questions sourced from inside our community. As with everything else right now, we are learning how to modify traditional in-person events to virtual ones. The League of Women Voters records and retains a full unedited copy of all candidate forums. If any portion of a League forum is redistributed out of context to make a candidate appear to say something they didn't say, or edited to make a candidate look bad or in any way they did not actually look in the original forum, then the League of Women Voters will alert the media, provide the unedited video for comparison, and file appropriate complaints with any appropriate governing agency. For the virtual 2020 primary forums, we record each candidate interview using the same structure, a 60 second opening statement, 90 second responses to three community sourced questions, and a 60 second closing statement. The forum recordings are being offered in two formats. Videos can watch each interview as a standalone choice, and they can watch a compilation of all candidate interviews for each position in five part playlists. This compilation shows the candidate in the order that they appear on the ballot, answering the same question. Part one includes this introduction and candidate opening statements. Parts two to four show each question being asked, then each candidate response. Part five shows each candidate closing statements plus my closing remarks. The forum recordings will be available at the Kitty Task County League website and on our YouTube channel. On the Daily Record website and Ellensburg Community Television, Spectrum Channel 191, and Inland Networks. Kittitas County Commissioners are, take a four-year term, serve a four-year term, and are empowered to set county policy, adopt laws, implement them, and accept for the responsibilities of other elected officials, carry out the day-to-day -day operations of the county. Three candidates are running for Kittitas County Commissioner District 2, Commissioner 2, Jerry Martins, Laura Oshadish, and Jessica Carricker. We thank them for their participation. And now I would like to welcome Jessica, Jessica Carricker to the forum. Thank you for taking time to be with us. We will start with your 60 second opening statement. Thank you. I want to thank the League of Women Voters and the Daily Record for hosting this event in unprecedented times. My name is Jessica Carricker and I'm running for Kittitas County Commissioner District 2. My husband and I are not born and raised in Kittitas County, but we've chosen to make our livelihoods here and call it home. We own an automotive shop where our slogan is, come in as a customer and leave as a friend. We wanted to put customer service back into the service industry. COVID-19 changed our plans for 2020, and through that process, we learned a lot as far as what needs needed to be done in our communities. Your voice matters to me. It's time we stand united. It is time we the people elect a county commissioner who prioritizes individual rights, community health, common sense, reason, and has the backbone to put principles above politics. I, Jessica Carriker, a small business owner and a resident of Kittitas County, am that voice for the people, and I look forward to answering your questions today. Thank you. Thank 
Question one, what are your priorities for the county budget as a result of the loss of tax revenues due to COVID-19? Ms. Carricker, you have 90 seconds to respond. Thank you for the question. My hope is with the county hiring the Ferguson Group April of this year, that that is money well spent. $60,000 is what it costs to retain them for one year. That group has gone out, um, they're in Washington, D.C., and their, their goal is to prioritize funding needs um, in our communities in the county. So my hope is, is that because that money was spent um, for grant writing, we were able to find grants at the federal, state le federal and state level to help offset the costs of lost revenue because of, ta of taxes. If that's not the case, one of the areas that I would like to see cut, whether we um, have lo lost tax revenue or not, is a higher, or, sorry, is the county land buying freeze. A lot of land is being purchased in the county in the last five years in the amount of over a few million dollars. And that's not money that's well spent as far as tax dollars go for our communities. So that's one of the things I'd like to implement whether we are in a tax uh, COVID-19 crisis or not is to halt all land purchasing by the county. Thank you. Thank you. Question number two, how would you ensure that county planning meets the needs of all community members, especially people of color, LGBTQIA, disabled and low income groups? Ms. Carricker, you have 90 seconds to respond. Thank you for the question. So that's a, that's a really great question, especially um, when you consider that Washington State is 45th in the nation for mental health care. One of the things that I see as an issue, especially in Upper Kittitas County, is that we just don't provide the services that are needed. That's one of the things as your Kittitas County Commissioner is to bring services for mental health, recovery, and family services. As far as the other services um, that were discussed and asked in that question, my slogan is for the people, and that's all people. That's not just one side or the other side, that's for every individual that calls Kittitas County home. And I don't have the answers of what services that I would bring in personally, but I think what would be more important is to sit down and speak with different groups and find out where Kittitas County is lacking and how we can help out each individual group that calls Kittitas County home. That would be a priority of mine is to have an open door policy to be able to have those conversations. And really we need to be getting services up into Easton and Cleelum and Roslyn and Ronald, um, where we have the biggest infrastructure boom happening, but we just don't have the family and mental health services right now up there. So that's definitely something we need to be looking at and talking with the people that call Kittitas County home. So thank you. Thank you. Question three. If elected, how will you ensure that the governor, excuse me, how will you ensure that the county complies with all state laws, public health orders, and governor's proclamations? Ms. Carricker, you have 90 seconds to respond. I am going to take a head on the, I think the big question here is the mask mandate. And there's a lot of confusion and a lot of frustration with that going on around in our communities. And I think bottom line, not just as your Kittitas County Commissioner, but also as an individual, it's important for me to um, communicate openly and honestly what the definition of a proclamation is, what the definition of a mandate is, is in, and to ensure that we're getting out what really those, the information is. Um, uh, the mask mandate is not a law. Businesses cannot enforce people to wear masks, um, and that there's a lot of confusion and frustration with that. We can promote being healthy and for, um, you know, cleaning and doing all of that as far as in the grocery stores, but um, clear communication is imperative to me. And I know there's a lot of frustration and hurt in our communities. Otherwise, I really believe that Kittitas County does a good job with following um, laws and orders and whatnot, but I, I believe the big thing, the big question is, is the mask mandate there. Um, and it is a proclamation and proclamations, unfortunately are not law. 
and LNI can enforce businesses and the health department can enforce those businesses, but really we need to be communicating, have clear, concise uh, information being put out to the public. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Carricker, you now have 60 seconds to make your closing remarks. Thank you. I want to thank the League of Women Voters and the Daily Record again for hosting this event. It's been wonderful to get an opportunity to sit and chat. My name is Jessica Carricker and I'm running for Kittitas County Commissioner District 2. You can visit my website at www.kittitascommissioner.com to read about my endorsements that are listed there or see my social media pages. Our county needs elected officials who understand that they are elected to be the voice of their constituents. Those that are capable of holding all departments to the highest standards who will ensure transparency and will never overlook any kind of disengagement with the community by any county employee, especially when tough questions are being asked. We need the strength of real leadership during unprecedented times. Elected officials that are willing to stand up for our constitutionally protected rights and understand that their powers are inherent of the people who voted them into office. My name is Jessica Carricker, and I'm running for Kittitas County Commissioner District 2, and I am for the people. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for coming and sharing your views with the voters of Kittitas County. As, as we conclude, um, as we conclude, I want to remind everyone that our ballots should be here July 17th. And we have till 8 p.m. on August 4th to return them. If you're not registered or need to change your address, you have till the 27th to do so online or by mail. After July 27th, you can register, update your registration, and vote in person through 8 p.m. on August 4th at the County Auditor's Office. And if you don't get your ballot, be sure to call the county's auditor or go and visit. To get more information of all the candidates running in the 2020 primary, the Kittitas League has created a nonpartisan online voters guide. You'll find links to candidate websites and other helpful resources there. You can also get information at vote411.org and at the Washington Secretary of State's office. I'd like to thank all of the candidates who made time to participate in our event. The Kittitas County League wants to thank the Daily Record newspaper for co-sponsoring the virtual 2020 primary forums and to Ellensburg Community Television, Spectrum Network, and Inland Networks for showing the forum videos throughout the county. Finally, thank you to the many League volunteers who made these events possible. Your vote matters. Please join me by casting your ballot in the August 4th primary. Thank you.